Amen. How do we clarify that in our doctrinal statement? In the doctrinal statement, we spent most of our discussion time that day focusing on this question, what is the gospel and is the doctrine of sola fide, justification by faith alone, essential to the gospel and essential to Christianity and to salvation? Because the problem that I had and others had with ECT is with the statement that we are justified by grace through faith because of Christ. I've been saying for 10 months that every delegate to the Roman Catholic Council of Trent in the 16th century would have happily signed that. That ECT nowhere explicitly mentions the Protestant and Reformation doctrine of sola fide, justification by faith alone. It doesn't affirm it. It doesn't deny it. But what I have been concerned to say is that implicitly and inferentially, and I think the necessary inference of the document is that sola fide is not necessary to believe in order for one to be a brother or sister in Christ because the Roman Catholic Church certainly does not affirm sola fide. And just going back, if I can make the point solidly, to borrow the language of the Apostle Paul, any attempt at self-righteousness, no matter how noble the effort, no matter how, uh, how frequently the God vocabulary is used and the divine is brought into it, any attempt at self-righteousness, Paul classifies as scubalon in Philippians 3. That word is about as vivid a word as he could possibly use. It can be translated rubbish. The most accurate translation is dung. When you're talking about it, when you talk about a works righteousness system of any kind, the, the word is scubalon. You're not talking about somebody who's almost there and God is going to say, well, you're close enough. You know, a leaner counts too. Um, it's not that way at all. Uh, it, it, it's so far from saving that it's, it's rubbish, it's garbage. Uh, that's why Paul said, all my life, he said, I tried to achieve this stuff, and I had all this stuff in my gain column. Remember that in Philippians 3? And then I saw Christ and a righteousness which came not by the law, but a righteousness that was given to me by faith, the righteousness of God, and immediately all that was gain was scubalon. And what you've got is a whole system built on scubalon, and you can't throw your arms around that system. You can't embrace it and simply say, well, they talk about Jesus, and they talk about God, and they talk about faith, and they talk about grace, and, and we've got to embrace them. And if we don't embrace them, we're violating the unity of, of the body, and we're, we're being ungracious to uh, other disciples. Uh, that is a frightening misrepresentation of the distinctiveness of justification by faith and, and faith alone. Dr. Kennedy, you know, Catholicism believes that uh, evangelical Protestants do not emphasize or put enough significance on the changed life. Okay, they hear us talk about justification by faith alone, and they think that nothing has to happen in terms of the life. But they get mixed up justification with sanctification. Would you define those and talk about the relationship? They state very clearly that... Uh Justification encompasses sanctification, so they confound the two. Now, justification and sanctification must always be distinguished, but they can never be separated. Justification is an act, once and forever, instantaneous, whereby God declares a sinner, an ungodly, unrighteous, sinful man, declares him righteous for the sake of Christ having imputed to him the righteousness or the perfect obedience of Jesus Christ. And that is once and for all done. No Christian is more or less justified than another. We are all justified instantaneously, all justified totally and completely. Sanctification is a process which begins at that moment of regeneration, the moment of salvation, and grows all through our lives. It is different in every uh, believer. Sometimes you hear people say they don't like people that are holier than thou, uh, holier than me. But the fact of the matter is there are Christians that are holier than I am, and holier than you are, and holier than everyone here is. 
and everyone sitting in this room as it's some different degree of, of cleansing and growth in the Christian faith. That is completed by glorification, which again is an act which takes place after death, immediately after death, where all of the vestigial remains of sin are removed and we are made absolutely perfect. It's if, it is if, as if the perfect white robe of Christ's righteousness were placed upon us once and for all. Internally, we were gradually being cleansed and purified throughout this life, and at glorification after death, inwardly, we were made as perfect as outwardly we are accounted for Christ's sake right now. But they make sanctification a part of justification so that the person must work long and labor hard. I was just reading some of the things which they tell a person they must do in order to receive the grace of justification. Consider these things. They must love and worship God, pray, fasting. They must love one's, not one's neighbor. They must practice self-renunciation, obey the commandments of God, bear witness to the Catholic faith, follow supernatural, supernatural inspiration in deeds, confess the major doctrines of the church. And if they do all of these things, they may become worthy of justification. But the Bible says that God justifies the ungodly and that we are justified apart from works. <clears throat> In the third chapter of, of Romans, where Paul gives the fullest statement of the gospel, he concludes with this concluding statement. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from, chorus, apart from, the works of the law. Now that is nothing other than sola fide is stated in other words, faith alone. A man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. But they are saying a man is justified by faith based upon his completion of a whole series of years of efforts to keep the law. And finally, he is justified by his own merit in, in effect. John, I was just going to add, the, the process of justification, and it is a process in the Catholic faith, starts with infant baptism. And they say that justification is initiated as a process at infant baptism. And it progresses through life based upon what you do with infused grace. And grace is infused into you supernaturally. It's infused into you through the mass. It's infused into you through the sacraments. And as it's infused and you cooperate with it, you keep the justifying process going. Now, you can stop that process at any point in time with a mortal sin, uh, but, but as you keep it going. Even when you get to the end of your life, the odds are you haven't kept it going good enough and you're going to purgatory. Now, when you get in purgatory, you hang around there for an eon or two, uh, doing whatever you can do to, to keep that process moving, hoping somebody up on top is sending down something from the treasury of merit to add to you so that eventually justification may actually be completed and you'll get out of that place into heaven. Nothing could be a more convoluted view of what is an instantaneous act in the Word of God, as he said exactly, by which God places the righteousness of Christ on you. And the truth is, I am no more righteous to the satisfaction of God now than I was before I was declared righteous. In That's not true. That's not the truth. The truth, the truth is John MacArthur has, is a changed man. And the truth is John MacArthur has, has had some degree of sanctification in his life. Well, this, no is true. this is true. This is true. But, but no what more. I said was, what I said was, <laughs> you've got you to get my qualifier. I said I am no more righteous in the sense of satisfying a just God. In other words, I cannot achieve a righteousness that satisfies his requirement. Yes. I believe in regeneration, that's a different issue, and that there is a work of God in my life that is a sanctifying work. That's why I was joshing him there, because I mean, we don't want to give the impression no, no, I appreciate it, that then. people think that, that just because we believe we're justified by faith that nothing happens, that we remain unchanged. Take 45 seconds for the person that tuned in just to this program that would like to have his sins forgiven and have Christ's righteousness imputed to him, R.C., how does he do it? 45 seconds, I would say his only hope of being forgiven and restored to, to a relationship with God is to confess his sins, acknowledge his sin, and, and repent of his sins, and look to Christ and to Christ alone, who is the only person who is sufficient 
to give him what he desperately needs to be reconciled to God, that Christ will cover your nakedness, that Christ will supply the righteousness from himself and grant you all of his righteousness as a robe to put upon your nakedness. And by, if you would receive him by faith and trust in his righteousness, then you will be received by the Father into the Father's house and adopted into his family. That's great. And we're just starting this. Next week, I hope that you'll join us because we're going to go to step two of this, and that is in the culture wars, abortion, pornography, fighting these evils that we all agree are wrong. How far can legitimate unity be pushed? And we're going to talk about that next week. I hope that you'll join us.